Welcome to the greenhouse with beer on a rather damp Saturday afternoon. Uh, this is the first day of a show by one of our most popular artists, whose name is Peter Barker, who you'll be talking to in a moment or two. We've you exhibited Peter for a number of years now at the gallery, and we're probably his major outlet in the UK. We found him, incidentally, when my wife and I were cycling down through Britain, and we happened to wander through Stanford in Lincolnshire. And there in a little tiny gallery was uh, some very fine paintings of Peter. And they were small and exquisite, and we thought that's just what we were looking for in terms of addition to our collection in this gallery in beer. So found him, found him on, on the web, got hold of him, and he started introducing his pictures here. It was about seven years ago. Great success. And his reputation down here has grown enormously. Loads of people have turned up for this show today. They've come from as far away as Southampton and uh, London and uh, Wells and Bristol. Uh, so his popularity spreads. So I'd like to introduce you to the artist in question and he's been taking you through some of his thought processes and his painting. So I'll hand you over now to Peter Barker. Fantastic, thank you. Peter, you can now say things about your paintings. Right. Hello, Peter. Hello. Well, please tell me about your, your work. My work, right. This is a collection of my work from the last uh, four months. Oils and pastels. Right. Some are local singers. Devonian. Cornish ones. Mostly around my local river, the River Welland. Near um, a village called Duddington, in Rutland, where I live. Right. There's a mile stretch of river which I've painted in all seasons. So is that, that one there? Yes. Okay. And which is your favourite work of art? My favourite. Uh, Put you on the spot. Yeah. I like this one actually. I suppose that's a labour of love. Right. Uh, a pair of swans in winter, obviously. And it's the one we had the heavy snow last winter. It's a glaring winter sun, morning sunlight. Went off the water. And where, whereabouts? That is the River Welland again in Rutland, just down the road from where I live. A mile stretch of river, but uh, gained a lot of mileage out of in the last few years. So, how, how long was that have taken you to paint? Uh, that was probably, I suppose, two to three days worth of quite a big painting, which is 20 by 30. Yeah. These two swans know me very well. They bought all seven youngsters last summer. Goodness. So they're on first name terms with them. And I know you've, you've told Caroline all of this, but I haven't yes. been party to it. Ah. So how do you go about creating a, a work like that? Right, well that particular one, it's a big one, it's done in a studio. Uh, from photographs I take outside, and I blow them up to do a computer screen, and the clarity of that is so good, it's almost, it's the next best thing to actually sitting outside and painting. So, it's perfect clarity to work from a big screen, good size image, and paint from that. Smaller works I've done on Pane, i.e. on site. So where, which of those? Uh, where are we? Over here. Okay. Okay. That one's done on site. Very cold February morning. Very fine detail. Uh, so how long would that have taken? Us again? That was probably, I suppose, four hours work on site and just a little bit of work back in the studio. So what time of year would that have been? That was February. Goodness. So you'd have been uh, with your woolly hat and gloves? Yes. I was standing on a very steep slope. The, the slope down to the water here was a sort of a one in two gradient. And so I had uh, aching feet after that, perched on the side of this slope. Right. Looking straight into the sun, you can see the, the light glinting off the water. So yeah, that was quite a challenge. So just ma managed to get back before gangrene set in. <laughs> under the fingers. <laughs> no, I don't believe it. <laughs> Yeah. And then we'll just shuffle it.
Uh, any, any others that you would like to discuss? Yeah, we'll think. Uh, we'll think. <laughs> it's beer. Right. Yeah, that's a very iconic scene, isn't it? Yes. I brought this chap between the two boats because I wanted to accentuate the, the glare from the water. So I like, almost, a, well, it's just a silhouetted image and almost obliterated around the edge. You get that halo effect when you're looking straight into the sun. Right. So uh, hopefully I've captured that. And I critically like the, the folds of the, the, the rubber matting here. Yeah. Oh. Uh, the looking straight into the sun, you've got a nice shadow where it's on. So how often do you come back to beer? Uh, I suppose every three or four months I'm taking a trip down. Oh goodness, so it's quite an inspirational place for you. Yes. Yes. Mm. And this time when you can get that top one. Yep. Chap walking with the two excuse me, petrol cans. That's uh, Kim Angley by one of our fishermen. Oh right. Great big fun. He takes out the uh, mackerel fishermen early morning. That was very early. Oh, it's handy to know a good fisherman. Yes. yes. That was about seven o'clock in the morning. And that's, that's the other thing that people don't often consider, that as an artist you have to be out at the crack of dawn. Yeah, a lot of them, yes. Yeah. Yeah. To get that particular quality of light, yeah. Yeah. the sun just rising, that's a past, both, that's a past, sorry, this one's an oil. Right. It's a close of these two swans we showed earlier. Are they your favourite creatures? By they are my favourite creatures, certainly in, you know, in terms of uh, painting birds. Yeah. It's the same pair that come oh, up on the river every year, and they know me now. I'm just saying, first, first, name, first name terms. Me. <laughs> are they seriously the same pair that come over here? Yes. How do you know? Yes. You can just tell by the way they, they react to me. They seem to know me. They see me quite often. So what qualities would, would you say you need to be a, a good artist? Paint what you see. If you wanted to paint the sort of things that I do that show the, uh, the detail and the quality of light, it's painting what you see, not what you think you see. Which sounds an easy thing to say. Like, you know trees are green, but if you paint them just a uniform green, they're not convincing. Similarly, snow, uh, we know snow is white, but it's only white if the sun is shining directly on it. So, if we go back to this picture again, you see an awful lot of blues and purples and pinks in there. There's practically no white. In fact, the only bit of white in the painting is the the light on the water and the snow bank in the distance which has light reflecting off it otherwise. It's painting what you see to make it look convincing. How do you get that light though? I mean that's an incredibly difficult thing to get right, isn't it? I'm extremely strong. I don't doubt that. <laughs> well really it's again it's painting what you see, you'll see there's quite a few of orange and yellow, you get that when you look straight into the sun, the edges are almost a halo effect, and you get that uh, whatever's there is almost obliterated, it almost appears orangey. That's the, the nearest thing you can get to painting pure light. There's no pastel or oil paint which uh, is as bright as pure sunlight, so you have to use a few tricks just to. Duplicate. That's the best way to do it. Very interesting. Uh, so, how, how many paintings have you brought for those exhibitions? Uh, Thirty-six in this year. Goodness me! And they've all been painted this year. Yes, since Christmas. Yes. So, what is your typical work? Like? I mean, is it just that typical? Or? Yeah, it seems to be, yes. I've got to start on another exhibition as soon as I get back home, so no peace with the yes, no. Yeah. So what are you doing? I'm turning one once a week or? No, more than that. No, I wish it was that slow. <laughs> These, um, that actually was done as a demonstration piece. Right. Uh, that's a, that's kind of a day's work or a bit less probably. And these two up here, oh, sorry, they've gone, they've moved. That one there, probably not see no, yeah, I don't know. That's that's yeah, not bad. That was a, that's another pastel painting that was done as a demonstration piece to an art society. Judging by all the red dots, you have some royal followers. Yes, yes, a good start. Yes. Pretty good. Oh, pretty nice, yes. Won't focus on the composition, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs>
This one I enjoy, the duck really. Right. Oh, the duck. Oh, uh -huh. I just like the quality of the, the swirling light in the water. And whereabouts as well? <coughs> That's uh, again on my local river Wellen. I call it whirling dervish. The way it was twisting around, letting these beautiful patterns on the water, so it's this marbling effect. And again, looking straight into the sunlight, which is my favourite sort of light. You get these lovely jewels of light glinting off the water. And he's trying to assimilate that. Thanks. Oh, oh goodness, man. Were you actually sat back? in front of that? No, I wasn't. You were? <laughs> don't, no, don't blame you. It's an English longhorn cow, actually. Not a <laughs> Beautiful longhorn. Particularly <laughs> nice to paint. Lovely light on that. <laughs> Moist nose. Your eyes following around the room. <laughs> <laughs> This one's a, a Devon scene, uh, quite a dramatic sky. It's quite something. Yes. And uh, a lot of sun on the scene, so it's lighting up the hay bales, giving that lovely light effect. Just in not realistic, isn't it? Well, hopefully, not for me to say. <laughs> Again, I, well, I paint what I see, I like to paint things as they are. Yeah. I'm not um, an abstract artist. I like to be a little looser, but it seems to be the way I naturally gravitate towards. Mm. There's a lake. Yeah. This one's done from the Langstrath Valley in the Lake District. Right. Yeah. Beautiful part of England. It certainly is. Bonus in the background, the big sweet grey hill. That was early March before the came out the trees. Still about the same temperature as it's now in early May down in Beer. Six degrees. Yes. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, that's right. I was in the camera. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This one. That's the uh, axe history. Right. Mud flats. It was a particularly dull day, and suddenly the sun broke out, giving this wonderful light effect on the water. Mm. Lots of gold. So I've called it Waders on the Strand. Right. And I like this green light here. The sunlight coming through the clouds. I think we might just be able to get that. Sort of viridian colour light. You must find it very difficult to let a painting go. You know, you put so much into it. Not when you've got bills to pay. <laughs> Inspired favourites. You must become attached to them. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. And because of that, do you ever keep, keep hold of them? Or? No. no. <laughs> Only if they don't sell. <laughs> I enough. get the duds. <laughs> I keep the duds. Uh, yeah, that's another local scene. Just down here. Oh, yeah. Barley field, a few. And I use this extremely expensive glass. It's uh, non-reflective and perfectly clear. It's quite something. It's a standard picture glass. is isn't actually clear, which sounds ridiculous to say. It actually has a greeny grey cast on it, so it rather dulls the colour. But this stuff is uh, it's extremely expensive. That piece is about eighty pounds for that size of painting. Well, it's worth it. Getting the. Yeah. 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 Yeah.